人の幼なじみが集まってワイワイおしゃべりカジュアルインタラクション Welcome to Casual Interactions, a show about old friends getting together, telling stories. I'm John Hambone McGuire, and with me today are some of my oldest and dearest friends, Frank I. Arrow and Sean Simon. Frank has been a traveling musician all his life, best known as the guitar player of My Chemical Romance and singer of Leathermouth and Death Spells. He's currently fronting his own band and writing music as a solo artist. Sean is a writer and best known for his work on the true lives of the fabulous Killjoys, Art Ops, and Neverboy. He is currently working on Wizard Beach for Boom Studios. I'm a jack of all trades, and if I told you what I actually did for a living, I'd have to kill you. So to say that we're busy is an understatement. We are a group of friends who are just looking for an excuse to get together more and hang out. We used to do it over breakfast, and we figured that eating eggs on mic would be a little too gross, so we're going to do this podcast instead. How are you guys doing today? Hey, doing good, man. Doing very good. I'm very excited to see you guys. I'm very excited to see you too, man. <laughs> and especially in front of a mic without eggs on your face. Well, you know, I, I often have egg on my face. I do say a lot of dumb shit. However, it is a little better to not be chewing on microphone or slurping. or. I do have hard-boiled eggs in my pocket that I'm, I'm waiting to bust out for later. <laughs> is that what that smell is? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I have. I'm prepared. That's, that's what good. I'm saying. You were a Boy Scout for like two weeks. <laughs> it's evident that you've actually survived your training. <laughs> When I was a kid, though, I went to Catholic school, and everybody wanted to be an altar boy, but I couldn't do it because I would see my dads on the weekends, right? And I couldn't do Boy Scouts either, and I was real depressed about that. I remember. Yeah, but you know, he taught you how to play drums, so there's got to be. <laughs> that's a, that's the that was the upside. There's got to be yeah. a, an upswing yeah. to I it. I didn't get touched, and and <laughs> I got I learned how to play drums. <laughs> We're not yeah. even a minute in. <laughs> I can't picture you as an altar boy. I know. You me either. probably would have burned that altar. Well, down. here's the thing. Think about this: holding fucking fire in your hands on, on <laughs> later. Altar. Later on in my career as a grammar schooler, right <laughs> in eighth grade, at, right before graduation, we were going to have practice. Graduation. I don't know why you have to have practice for graduation. They need to make sure you can walk in a straight yeah, line. Exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. That's that's, basically yeah, it's like a DUI, basically, yeah, <laughs> for eighth graders. But we'd have them in the church. And I remember a few of my friends had these stink bombs. And they were like, oh, we should throw them in the church. <laughs> and, I was, and everybody was like, no fucking way. I was like, I'll fucking throw that shit. <laughs> and I took him and I threw him. And of I got, course you did. Nah, of course I did. And yeah. then they wouldn't let me graduate. <laughs> so you were, you were an eighth grade domestic terrorist. <laughs> yeah, I think I was just pissed I couldn't be an altar boy. Well, just think about like how a church smells musty baseline. Like any church right, you right, go right. into, you never walk into a church and, and go, wow, this place smells really good. They must be like using Yankee candles or something. <laughs> it always just smells baseline musty. And then you add a stink bomb to it in a room that's not very well mm-hmm. ventilated either. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I called it frankincense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Later on though, too, I remember I had to go to like one of those retreat things because of this and then I ended up getting in trouble there because we stole the wine mm. and we were drinking we got like, caught us drinking wine <laughs> how about you Sean were you ever an altar boy or boy scout when you were a kid I was an altar boy you yeah. were I was yeah oh. I don't know if I have any stories though <laughs> I just did the shit and left. Right. <laughs> right. But you but you have the knowledge and that's how you can judge if I Right. You can because see that's me why that I, I can see you burning down the church. <laughs> yeah, I could yeah. If probably. Frank was an altar boy. <laughs> yeah. Now now the churches just burn when you walk into them. <laughs> yeah. right. Which which right. has gotta be like a ninth level spell. Good for you getting to that <laughs> level of wizardry. <laughs> so why don't we take a second and step back? Let's talk about how we met. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. So we all grew up in different parts of town. Frank grew up in Belleville. True. I grew up in Clifton. Sean grew up on the other side of Clifton. Right. Now, for those listening, the city of Clifton is shaped like a giant horseshoe, and this is in New Jersey. It borders 12 other towns, so where Sean lived in Clifton might as well have been four towns away from where I lived. Is it really shaped like a horseshoe? It yeah. is shaped like a giant horseshoe. Wow. It's shaped like horseshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just parts of it smell just, like horseshit. Just horseshit. Yeah. I actually did a report on it in the sixth grade, and that's how I know it's shaped like a giant horseshoe. Oh. Borders 12 towns. Don't ask me to name them now. Because I don't remember most of them. I'm still thinking of like how, because I, I get lost everywhere, but that's maybe that's why I can't figure my way around Clifton. Well, you, you were only ever in Clifton. You'd never actually been outside of it. Like you went from Belleville into Clifton. You just never left. That's right. true. That's true. Yeah. We're talking about origin stories. Right? Yes. All right. I remember, I because I met Sean first. Did and you? Yes. Oh, and I don't even year. remember. Freshman year orientation. Right. Oh. I met you at the orientation. And that was like another world though. Like, I feel like, I don't know. It's all right. You could say you don't remember me. No, no, I do remember you. <laughs> I do remember you. But you were friends with Eugene. Yeah. And I was friends with Costa. That's right. And they, he, they he, were friends. He used to steal cheese. He used to steal cheese? Didn't he steal cheese? <laughs> From who? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I don't know. If you, I think you made that up. But no, maybe. 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 I just, he's just a really small kid, and you still right. think he used to steal cheese. He, he might have. <laughs> he might have. I think you just projected that on him. <laughs> I mean, 
I definitely stole a lot of things with him, none right. of which I believe were cheese. Right. But I mean, maybe he was just it's possible mouse like, and I just. <laughs> Anyway, so they would skate together, and I remember finding right. out that you skated right. too, and then right. I would just bring a board and watch you guys skate. Did you actually skateboard though, or did you just? I like... did, and then broke both my ankles, and I was never ah, good. Like, okay. I think I got as far as like I maybe landed three ollies. And that's mm. that's like, three oh, more than me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my first remembrance of mm. you. But then you didn't I stick around long. I left after freshman year. Yeah. 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 So we didn't even really hang out that much. No. Now I was two years older than Frank in high school. Right. And so I didn't even know up until we started hanging out years later that right. you were in the same high school as me because I, I wouldn't, not that I was like some cool older kid. I definitely was not. <laughs> <laughs> However, I wasn't at freshman orientation that year because I was a junior. So right. yeah. So years later, we end up meeting again because of a mutual friend. Yes. Uh, it was Bruno, right? Bruno. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you went to Burton Community College with Bruno. Kind of went there. Kind of went there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, n- n- one does not really Sean go to Burger Community College. I didn't stick around much for very for long. Yeah. yeah, He's just out there smoking <laughs> cigarettes, hanging with the cool kids, being bad. Oh, yeah. And he can be an altar boy. And he could be That's an altar boy. I see. Well, you right. know what? He's, he's quiet about it. He just shuts the fuck up. He gets in there, does his job, gets out. That's like it, you, true. you had to make a production of yeah, everything. Frank, <laughs> Frank would have made sure everyone knew he was an altar boy. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> Fucking drama, <laughs> drama boy, drama yeah, altar boy. I mean, boy. You, I can imagine you like oh, I'm an altar boy, like like flashing your cross, like you're a cop, like you know. Here, <laughs> yeah, I'm on the job. <laughs> I'm on the job for Jesus. <laughs> shit all right fine. oh man touche so frank and i played in bands together in high school and we played uh with one of our friends named bruno bruno brought sean along one night to hang out and we've all been friends ever since we've since played in bands together we've since played in bands separately and now we're here in frank's basement recording a podcast yeah man, isn't that crazy fucking small world it's 20 years is it's, it really? It's about twenty years worth of friendship happening. That's you crazy. know culminating in this yeah. podcast. I don't so feel old. like I'm twenty years older than I was. No, neither do I, man. I still. Like, I also don't I feel do. like. I also don't feel like I look it. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't know if no. that's just me. Well, or... you kept your hands in this. <laughs> yeah, you you were always the looks of the band. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right. So yeah, we love hanging out together. We are always looking for new reasons to hang out because it's hard when you get a little bit older people have kids people have different jobs things that take you different places some of us going all over the world so what we're going to do every episode is talk about a different topic so today we're really just going to focus on our origin story so that's how we ended up all meeting and Mm -hmm. then a little while after that you know frank and i've been playing in bands together since high school i played with a couple different people frank tried to go to college (laughs) I I tried to to go to college a few times, and then we ended up getting back together and deciding to start a new band. And that band ended up being Pansy Prep. Yeah. So we wanted a keyboard player, and we just loved hanging out with Sean. Wait, did you want a keyboard player? I think we did. Or were you just like, we like hanging out with this dude, do something for us? I think it was a both. It was a little bit of both. Yeah, Yeah, a little column A, a little column B. (laughs) Like, guitar's a little too hard to learn. Right. Here's a keyboard. And I was already playing bass. (laughs) And, and that's what it was. We pulled a keyboard out from uh, right. under the bed, and exactly. we said, "Learn how to play this, and you could be in the band." Because we just wanted to keep hanging out with you. Right. And that, and that was it. That's right. you know that's that's the real origin story of how Pensy Prep started. We just wanted to hang out more with Sean. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the moral of it: is that we continuously manufacture things so that we can hang out with you, Sean. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like this that? podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's just the ongoing thing. 20 years later, I don't Amon know. bought a bunch of mics. Right, <laughs> so right. You, Just to lure are. you to our house to hang out. <laughs> because breakfast wasn't enough sometimes. I had to, I had to take it up a notch. Yes. We're exactly. courting you right now. God damn it. But I mean, that's, that's what it is. You look at the band like the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what does Ben Carr really do? Well, apparently Ben Carr's a tour manager and he runs the whole day-to-day operations of the band. But back in the day, they just wanted to hang out with their buddy. They wanted for, something for him to do. They said, well, just... Just dance on stage. There you go. So oh, you, that's right. You yeah. should be happy, Sean. We didn't that make you dance. dance. Uh-huh. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had to set our, say our goodbyes back then. <laughs> well, even early Pensy shows, mm-hmm. it was a lot of playing like verses, or yeah. no, playing choruses, and then during the verses, you would just, just smoke. Just Yeah, I would <laughs> just, just smoke. smoke on stage. So I was like, here's this dude. He's going to stand there and look cool. Right. Smoking a cigarette. Yeah. It was very Velvet Underground. And yeah, you wouldn't even face the crowd either. Like, you know, the whole <laughs> no. the whole band is going at it with the crowd. You were just turned sideways and just staring at whatever wall was in the direction on, on stage left and just smoking. Judging. Judging. <laughs> right. Judging everyone. Yes. Light it up during the verse. Flying for the chorus. Sean right. Simon. There it is. <laughs> 
Yeah, and that's, well, I mean, it, it, it that's what you did. It did. Yeah. No. It worked. That was a fun band to be in. It was a fun band. You know band. what's weird about that band is like it feels like we were a band so much longer than we actually were. It wasn't I, that long, right? I, you know what I think? I think that Pensy wasn't long. The time period after when we were doing I'm a Graveyard, right. that was longer. Was that longer? I think so. Because we only had like three songs, didn't we? Around yeah. four or five. But I think that was the other thing too was we just liked hanging out so much. That right. We didn't want, we didn't want to stop. We didn't want to stop. Yeah. I feel like it was about a year and a half leading up to us getting ready to record the record. Mm-hmm. And then we recorded the record. We went on that one ill-fated tour right. mm. across America. Mm. Uh, and then we just kind of restructured the band right. uh, when Tim left. Yeah. No, actually, no. We re- restructured the band and we did I'm a Graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. And then Tim left. And then Tim left. Right. right. And, and then, that was the end of the band. And yeah. then Frank joined my camp. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a really great time. And it, the thing about that is, to me, I look back on that record kind of cringingly because I, I just can't <laughs> listen to it. It's, yeah. it's, it's really hard to get through. Yeah. And it's funny when I look at kids who were our age recording now. Right. And the kind of stuff that they're doing. And I, I granted, I know technology is very different, but the idea of the, our playing ability at 19, 20, 21 versus a kid who's 19, 20, 21 now is playing ability. Oh my God. It's like night and day. Oh, I know. It's it's like God bless that it happened before the internet and no one could catch on <laughs> that we like stunk. <laughs> we were tight. We were we were a good band, but we were like the high school band. And oh, now ev- no. everyone else is kind of doing laps around us. Well, I feel like that's the thing too. Is like, you know, now you see these like young kids, 11, 12, going on YouTube and learning how to play and, and really giving it their all. And, you know, it's insane. I just would listen to records and smoke pot in my room and <laughs> like, you know, like try to figure stuff <laughs> out and it, i don't know there wasn't that outlet to get better like you had to actually go and take lessons from right somebody. i was like fuck that and taking lessons yeah. sucked i know i mean i'm not shitting on anyone who does take no, lessons, no no yeah but just, when i was a kid i was like dude i, I wish take i did lessons that. i want i just want to go and do this however i realize now that it takes a lot of effort to make something look effortless yeah mm. and i also look back at that record fondly because where i am today kind of where we all are today is because of that record like the, the friends that i have and the family i have in my life i met all because i was in the music scene mm-hmm. i think we all did yeah, yeah right? we all did everything like, kind of originated from back then yeah my friend Carrie hit me up from Tennessee the other day and she was like you know talking about the Pensy Prep record and I, I was about to just shit all over it because it's, <laughs> well because it's hard for me to kind of go back and listen to but she she put, gave me the perspective and she said hey you know because of that record because you were in that band we met and because of that your other friends have met and now they have families and they're all together mm. because we were all kind of in that same place mm. at the same time mm. I have a profound sense of gratitude for the record I just can't listen to it. I, I wouldn't change anything no. because everything ended up the way it did. That's wonderful. Yeah. But if I could Doc Brown it oh, yeah. <laughs> and just tweak little things here and there, yeah. definitely there's a lot that I would I would, I would tweak. Yeah, someone but, would play to a click track. <laughs> well, <laughs> click click would help. Yeah, but <laughs> click would, would, lot, would lots, help. Lots of auto-tuning. Bit. But that's, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is there are certain things that you listen back and it's cringy, but that's because you were a fucking teenager. Right. And it know? was a very and different thing. Be. Being a teenager when we were teenagers, being a teenager now. Yeah. Night and day. I yeah. totally agree. I, I would totally not survive agree. as a teenager now. No. Fuck no. I'd be naked on the internet somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> and ruin yeah. my goddamn life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Doing some dumb shit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we had VHS recorders. We could destroy that shit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my friend George Bungalow lords over my head that he definitely has pictures of me when I was wearing eyeliner and flat ironing my hair. And I was like, please. <laughs> I was like, George, just just let me find a wife first because it'll be harder for her to leave me once those pictures come out. <laughs> There'll oh, be lawyers man. involved. Yikes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is like I do have minor interactions on social media, just like through Twitter and, and right. Instagram, stuff like that. Facebook is an animal that I can't understand so I, I just decide not to use it it's it's all racist <laughs> is it really <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's Facebook is where you go to figure out which of your friends have actually been racist this entire time oh my god <laughs> yeah you uh, just just stay off it that sounds terrible it's pretty bad so anyway well I'm not going on Facebook then <laughs> but people will send like pictures of like a moment in time just this fucking split second moment in time but like, <laughs> explain this I'm like what Motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. What are you talking about? <laughs> you have to explain every goddamn moment in your life that's been captured in some sort of video clip or like still or photo. Like, so you'll see some questionable hairstyles or, of or styles of things, and certain things maybe made sense in a moment because you were making fun of something. But then when it gets taken out of context, right. it makes no sense. But my response usually is that, like, all right, yeah, that may have been questionable, but. 
I will show you a hundred thousand people that are wearing their hair like that still right now. Absolutely, because I did that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what? What are they talking about? Your dreadlocks? Now I'm oh, there's that one. There's, there's that one. Is that one, one of them? Remember, remember when we cut those off? Yeah, and threw them out the hotel. We window? threw them out the hotel in Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. yeah, we planted them. <laughs> I mean, they're good. technically biodegradable, right? Yeah. So I don't know about no, that. they're not. No, oh, yeah. no they're not. No. Yeah, those are Hair. bad for yeah. the environment. That's yeah. why Chicago is the way it is because we threw them out <laughs> the window there. Frank, Frank's all dreadlocks. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a tree growing where you threw that dreadlocks out out outside the hotel where I'm staying at next week. I don't know if you remember this though. That started out of a joke because we're all in this back of this van and we're talking about the music that. Tim liked, which he was like really into like new metal and weird shit. Oh my god, yeah, I remember. ICP. And I started tying knots in my hair, and they turned into that, and we put like crazy glue in it, and that's Ew. how it started. And then it just got real nasty. I wonder if people like, because you know, everyone like lives on their phone now, like the distraction in the back of the van. I don't think a band would ever do that now uh-huh. because they're going to be so distracted being on like social media. Whereas to pass the time, you guys were really busy throwing my Thin Lizzy CDs out the window <laughs> and gluing your hair together. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You left the case though, which I always thought was did we leave funny. The case? You did leave the case. Why? why who threw the? Who threw your CDs out? You no, threw, it was it was a tape. It was a tape. Why I think. We, why did we decide that was a good idea? How many times can you hear jailbreak on the that, same tour? Yeah, it was like <laughs> the boys are not back in town. We have to stop. <laughs> it, it just got to be too much. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. It was it was it was the first intervention of many. So, <laughs> but all right. Here's another thing about origin stories. I remember this like it was fucking yesterday. But and Sean will vouch for this. Those early my chem tours like in that van where you would have to bring these billfolds of cds oh yeah you. oh absolutely that was like a hundred pounds of cds yeah. that you were bringing with you every tour to just you know get past the time and stuff like that like it was fucking horrible and everything would be scratched and destroyed by the time you get back Thrown of course. All over. oh yeah, yeah. absolutely because every bump in the road oh my god it's the same thing when we used to drive around so we had a van a yellow school bus van that i bought <laughs> for like 800 bucks the thing was the drizzling shits it was a terrible terrible van but we needed a van to go on tour and all we wanted to do was tour so we we went Went and I got the van and we got it fixed up. And the very first night of tour, we were playing at the Loop Lounge for our tour kickoff party. And as we were driving the van to the rehearsal space to go and pick up the gear, I bumped into a curb, the timing belt jumped, and we almost missed the first day of the tour. And it was all downhill from there because this this van also, antifreeze hose popped and destroyed the van's onboard computer, so we got stuck in Minnesota. Can we dive into that story a little bit more? Because yeah. that was the whole reason of the tour, was this one show that we got booked with, was it Le Savvy Fav? Yeah, it was Le Savvy Fav at the 7th Street Entry in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. So the 7th Street Entry is the smaller part of the first Ave, which is one of the biggest and most famous rock clubs in America. You've seen it in Prince's Purple Rain. And the whole point of the tour was that we got this gig at the 7th Street Entry with La Savvy Fav, and we were traveling out there to go and do this show. Now, on the way, besides the timing belt jumping, uh, we had a problem with the seal on the gas tank, so we could only ever fill the tank <laughs> up. That's right. Yeah. We could only ever fill the tank up three quarters of the way. So that was wow. the second yeah. problem. But the you kind of didn't know how far you were going you just thought oh, all right that's three quarters of a tank and then it would seep in and you would smell gas and we'd smell gasoline and, yeah. and wasn't it like we were nervous about flicking cigarettes out, yes, out the windows but it didn't stop us it didn't stop you <laughs> just yeah. no smoking no and, and i remember going and getting that going and getting that fixed getting the seal fixed and just sitting there and the guy was literally he uh, he had the van up and he's underneath it and he's smoking a cigarette and he's checking it and I'm like, this is how I die. <laughs> yeah. This is officially how it ends for uh-huh. me. Thankfully, it didn't. So, take us back, Frank. We were okay. driving to Minneapolis. Driving to Minneapolis. This was the show, man. This is it. We're going to make it. Mm. <laughs> this is like the big, our big show. And so we stop off in, in Minnesota, right? Right. And we're like, all right, we're going to get a good night's sleep the next day. We're driving to this show. We're going to play the biggest show of our band's career we just we're gonna have our cd it's gonna be great we're gonna do this and so we head out and i think it was maybe two hours into a three-hour drive right and the van was like no you're not (laughs) yeah (laughs) and because it just like like you ever see like in a horror movie where like someone just cuts like a stomach and just the bowels (laughs) fall out (laughs) yeah that's how it's everything like the poor girl just fucking just disemboweled on the highway so the hose popped blood antifreeze car blood everywhere and now i know what hot antifreeze smells like it smells like Ugh. hot maple syrup yeah uh so we we pulled over to the side of the road thankfully there was a ford dealership literally a thousand feet from where we were at the top of the hill so we got them to tow us there it cost 666 dollars and 34 cents mm, to repair geez. 
which I called my dad. I was like, Dad, please, please let me use your credit card. We're stuck out here. And he did. Like yeah. my, my father the has greatest. always yeah, been so supportive greatest, of the music that I've played and the music Frank's played. So he came in and he gave his credit card number over the phone to this car dealership in, outside of Minneapolis and we never made the show. Mm-mm. We didn't play the show. Did not play the show. Did yeah. not pay him back either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. He, he just put it on my tab. It's oh, like, how many times man. did you drop out of college, Sean? <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna just just add it up, you know. So I mean, so that was that was the first Pansy Prep tour. You know, we played uh, our friend Neil, who was in the band. He booked the tour, and this is this is back. Yeah. This is back. Email is just new. Like you know, there is internet, but people have like Juno. Like yeah, an right. a- AOL. They, there's no high speed internet. You know, we used to call CBGBs to get a gig. Like, they didn't have an email address. You'd have to call at like Tuesday or Thursday between these hours. And if you did not call during those times or you couldn't get someone on the phone, you weren't getting booked to CBGBs. So this is this is so many years ago. Like you think about it, that this was 2000. This is almost 20 years. Was it 2000 or was yeah. it 99? Oh, maybe it was 99 at that point. Yeah. I mean, you know, you and I have been friends. Yeah. I graduated in 97. I met you in 1995. And then I met you a few years later. So mm. yeah, ninety nine. Ninety nine, maybe. Yeah. Ninety nine was the first Pensy, the first and only Pensy tour. Right. So you know, we, we we made the towns, we played the clubs. Then the van had another problem where we got to I think Missouri of all places, and had they had to fix the gas tank again. And we were at a point where our last show of the tour was Columbus, Ohio, in this basement. Uh, I forget the name of the club, but it was it was it was a basement club, and the guy stiffed us for money because he's like, "Well, I'm not going to pay you guys. You didn't bring anybody." He's like, well, "We're from fucking New Jersey," <laughs> so we gunned it all the way home. We would not turn the engine off because we were afraid it wasn't going to yeah. turn back on. Do you remember the CD that was stuck in the CD player that we had to listen to the entire ten and a half hour ride home? No, no. Stay what you are by oh, Save the Day. Oh, so bleak. Yeah. It got stuck in the CD player because oh. everything else was going on. Why right. wouldn't that go wrong? Dude, well, that's the thing. It's a that's a great record, but like to listen over and over again on on our, our, yeah. already being depressed. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, yeah. We we got our asses kicked on that yeah. first tour, you know. And Shit. a little while after that, uh, Neil wasn't in the band anymore. Mm-hmm. And then a little while after that, we became I Am a Graveyard, mm-hmm. and we we did a couple years of that. Yeah. Still slugging along, and then you know the rest is history for Frank. Well, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You guys did the hostage after that too. We did do we the hostage for a little while. Hostage, yeah. yeah. The hostage, I think, we lasted maybe six, seven months. I think we played like three shows. We played three really awesome really, shows. Yeah, really good shows. We had a good yeah. buzz about us, but the other guys in the bands were dicks. You know what? I'll take that back. Dan wasn't a dick. Paul wasn't a dick. It was the other guy that was a dick. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he got a little too big for his britches, so the band well, had to break the, up. The problem with Dan, he, I remember, I think I was talking to you and you with my chem, you were like, yo, why don't you guys come out and open for us? Do you mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah. In like Pittsburgh or something like that. And then Dan was like, oh, I have to work because I have to pay my car lease or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, dude, where's your fucking drive to do this? The thing about being in bands and the things about doing any kind of like artistry or any kind of like going into business for yourself, it takes sacrifice. It does. Putting the time and effort into doing something that's outside of work in nine to five, it takes hard hard work like you could either make that decision to work nine to five for someone else or you work 18 hours for yourself my dad and my grandfather were musicians and they right. they played all the time and, and it wasn't always something that they did full time for a living it was something that they could do you know they had to have another job to, to right. support but my dad would always tell me like you know there's music and then there's a music business and one very often has nothing to do with the other mm-hmm. absolutely and the thing about you know music is it's the business side of it is so cutthroat and unforgiving at times right and there's no justice in it some of the best players are still looking for a fucking gig absolutely you, know, you could have a degree that you spent thousands and thousands of dollars on years and years of your life trying to obtain and you can't get a fucking job right you yeah know? so it would behoove you to have a, a safety net or like a real job so that you can you know afford to do these things but very often that's not conducive to this life right you know what i mean so you kind of have to throw caution to the wind and say fuck it <laughs> you know i'm gonna right. sleep on a bench that's if it. i have to to do this kind of thing and and that's not the smartest thing I I know. Yeah, it was definitely not the smartest thing, and I never. It's not be- easy either. I never begrudge Dan uh, for for no. not doing that. The thing is, you know, where we grew, how we grew up. Mm-hmm. You have to go to college. You have to get a job. You have to do this. You have to be responsible, and not everyone is ready to go off and join the circus. I just felt like with the hostage, especially that you know, me and you, Hambone, were on the same page with that. Yeah, and I felt other people weren't. 
Oh, definitely not. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I feel like me and you were ready to go if go was a thing to happen. Right. And the others were like, you know, I still have to do this, so I have to work around my fucking flat tire on my fucking mom's Dude. car. Yeah. It's very easy to say, hey, yeah, I'm down for it, like, for the cause. Right. I'll do it. It's another thing to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's that's the scary uh, point. In the words of Jim Teacher, everyone wants to rock and roll. No one wants to pay the price. Mm. <laughs> this is true. Yo, man, if we're easy, everybody do it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Fuck. But that's the thing, too, is, you know, the shitty thing is that it's, even if you have the talent and, and you have the, the heart and, and you take the risk, you still got to have the luck. It's yeah. like, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's this perfect story. It's like winning the lottery. It is. Know? I mean. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. For me, I didn't have the luck. My luck t- took me in very different directions, and I'm never change anything for it. I'm super, super grateful for it. You know, however, it hit a point where I was in my early 30s and I was like, shit, I kind of need to get like a job job Mm -hmm. and make some money because I got nothing. And that was cool. It was all right because I have a work ethic. Like when, you know, you're a person who's passionate about their art and what they create, you know, whether it's, you know, Sean is writing, Frank's writing music, I'm producing podcasts now. You always have that reason to get up in the morning and kick yourself in the ass and go take care of business. So I was able to go find a crazy job that if I told you what I did for a living, I'd have to kill you. Uh, I made a bunch of money and then I was able to kind of come back to the thing that I I love the most, which is playing music and being creative. Sometimes you just have to take a knee and reassess your situation, redefine your ideas of success. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so I mean, I got my happy ending. There it is. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> so do you guys have any final thoughts on the origin story? Oh, man. I feel like we didn't cover a lot. Yeah. We could probably keep going on an origin story, I think, for a couple of couple episodes. Maybe we could take a break and then, and then do another episode of origins. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this episode up. This will be origins, Origin 1A. <laughs> origin origin oh, 1. This is part one of the origin yes. story. Yeah. This is just... The story of Pansy Prep <laughs> right. and friendship, and next will be story of Pansy Prep and friendship. The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> so you know we'll, we'll we'll find some catchy subtitle for it. Frank, where can people find you? I, I live at New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't no, give no, them your address. No, no. That's uh, not what no. that means. I use Instagram. I have an Instagram called uh, Frank Iero Must Die. I have a Twitter that's at Frank Iero, and I have a website. I guess uh, Frank Dash Iero dot com because somebody had Frank Iero dot com. Is that why there's no A yeah. in it? Uh, what's that? Is there no? Isn't don't you do something when there's no A in your name? Is that why? I was yeah I was doing that for a while too. Oh, okay. So I could at least cut through some of the the, the fakers. It's mm. like faker He Man, dude. Somebody has <gasps> crankiro.com. I don't know who it is. I think I don't I don't know if like there's like I think there's companies that like go out and buy just domain oh, right. names and then try to like hold them ransom. Yeah. No, absolutely, you absolutely. Know? I mean, I'm shocked that I got hamfistedproductions.com, dude. I'm shocked that we got casualinteractions.com. Do we do we have that? Oh, yeah. The website? Oh, I got oh, it. Nice. Oh, shit. See? Look yeah. at you, man. Dude. Look at that. I'm, I'm proactive. Now, here's the thing. You could use that for this. Yeah. Right? And be all right. Or you could start like a weird porno hooker, hooker thing hooker and site. make a lot of money oh no that's why i'm that's why that's why we're sitting on it we're, right, we're right, never right, launching right, the right, website right, got it, until, got it, got i'm it. gonna wait till someone wants to pay us when the money comes rolling and we're splitting it three ways we're going to cabo <laughs> sean where can people find you i don't use anything i get i have twitter sean simon well what you do you have ha- twitter you do have a twitter i have twitter oh all right. yeah he, check it out I'm, I'm, he's been known to tweet well what do you have in stores right now what do I have in stores? Yeah, what book's out right now? Oh, nothing. I just uh, One of my books just was announced a few months ago called Wizard Beach. It's coming out in December, I believe. Okay, it, very it's, cool. It's a comic book, not a not a prose book. So Maybe one day you'll, you'll write some prose. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, when this episode's drop, Wizard Beach will probably be right around the corner. So definitely check out Wizard Beach at your local comic book store. Wait, if you write a prose book, can you, can you title it Every Prose Has a Thorn? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can find me at <laughs> you can check out my other podcast it's the Vintage RPG Podcast uh, it's a gaming podcast we talk about Dungeons and Dragons other RPG games you could also find me at MyTaiTV.com for my Punk Rock Tiki Podcast My Thai Happy Hour so for Sean Simon and Frank I. Arrow I'm John Hambone McGuire join us next month for another episode of Casual Interactions until then hold on to your friends Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Every review helps other listeners find us. Casual Interactions is a ham-fisted production. Music by Dead Go West. Art by Stephen Blay.